We recently got our first look into the Eternals world in the newest Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, sort of film teaser compilation. What an extravagant first look at the film's footage. I cannot lie, I was not sure how to feel about this movie initially, but this first sneak peek into the film got me hyped. If you are also a lover of mythology, history, as well as all things superhero, the Eternals are the group for you. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Today we are going to get to know this group better as we count down the top 10 Marvel Eternal facts you need to know. For those new to them or just looking for a refresher, this list serves to get you primed for adventures to come, both on the big screen and in the pages of Marvel Comics. All right, what are we waiting for? Let's get counting. Counting. Number 10, New Gods. Eternals being Jack Kirby's creation also have an obvious connection to some other work he had done a few years prior over at DC. Yep, we're talking about the New Gods. The Eternals allowed Kirby to continue to explore similar themes and characters tied to a world steeped in mythos, gods, and of course, the cosmic realm of superhero stories. Who doesn't like to get a little bit cosmic, am I right? The Dark Gods were created in 1971 by Jack Kirby, appearing in New Gods issue number one. The Eternals also made their first appearance in their own book, The Eternals issue number one in 1976, and were of course also created by Kirby. Number nine. Thanos. Thanos is actually one of the Eternals, a Titanian Eternal, but one nonetheless. He was born of the last Titan Eternal, Sui San, and the Eternal Mentor from Earth. Thanos actually has ties not just to the Eternals, but also kinda to the villains that we believe they'll be seen protecting from Earth in the MCU, the Deviants. Thanos himself was born with the Deviant Syndrome, which is considered a mutation and a genetic predisposition, only believed at this point in time to occur in Titan Eternals. Thanos is believed to be the only Eternal to have ever experienced this genetic mutation. However, while he has been genetically altered by the Deviant Syndrome, don't expect him to show up alongside the Deviants in the MCU. Because although they kind of share that name, Thanos for his condition, the Deviants for their race, they're both pretty separate. I don't know if it'll come up in the MCU that Thanos is technically, like, suffers from the Deviant Syndrome and kind of has that connection, but that would be pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool. Number eight, the Celestials. When it comes to the Eternals, it's important to note that they were part of an experiment devised by the Celestials. The Celestials came to Earth and chose a prehistoric tribe of humans to manipulate and alter with their power and technology. The Eternals were given great cosmic power that also allowed them to learn how to control every atom, every molecule of their being over time. As a result, they also became virtually immortal. Even if they and their body was destroyed and scattered, it was believed that they could resurrect them themselves, or be resurrected. Number seven, the Deviants. The Eternals' main enemies in the film will be the Deviants. But just who are the Deviants exactly? Well, the Deviants first appeared as the enemies to the Eternals way back in their first appearance in Eternals issue number one, with them also having a retconned first appearance even years before that in 1940 in Red Raven comics. But that was also, of course, before they existed in terms of their character creation. So you can take that one with a grain of salt. They were created by the Celestials at the same time as the Eternals out of prehistoric ape-like human beings. But where the groups of ape-like human beings who were turned into the Eternals were made beautiful and given cosmic power, the Deviants instead had their DNA unstabilized, which resulted in various extreme mutations, which also meant that any children of the Deviants, any offspring they had who managed to live, looked extremely different from their parents. The Deviants were often labeled as monsters and saw the Eternals as their enemies and their rivals. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to learn even more about the Eternals, let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number six, not alone in the cosmos. As evident with the Titan Eternals, of which Sui San was left as the lone progenitor, the Eternals that we know from Earth were not alone in the cosmos. They weren't alone on Earth as they had the Deviants, and they weren't alone in the cosmos as many other planets of note also had their own subspecies of Eternals. The most easily recognizable alien races who also had their own group of Eternals were the Kree and Skrull. Both of these groups were created by Celestials who selected a small group of ancient ancestors of those alien races during their visit to their home planets millions or billions of years ago and experimented on them to create the Eternals. Various different alien races of Eternals. Everybody gets an Eternals. You get Eternals and you get some Eternals. Eternals for you in the back. Number five. The Eternals, Volume 2, 1985. The Eternals have always kind of had a rocky go when it comes to their series getting 
coming off the ground floor. But if you are wondering what you should dive into in order to prepare for the film, or if you just want to jump into the wild, immortal, and God-inspired world of The Eternals, you should definitely check out the limited series of The Eternals from the 80s, volume number two. This series by Peter Gillis and Sam Buscema expands on the lore of The Eternals, fleshing out some key points from their background and their history. Get to know The Eternals a bit better in this 12-issue series. And when you're done with that, maybe you could also go and read a new Gaiman's The Eternals. That one is also quite short. That's volume three. I think it's from the early 2000s. Number four, who are they? Just who are the Eternals though? We know where they came from and we know of other Eternal groups out there in the Marvel cosmos, but who are the Earth hero team that we have come to know as the Eternals? And would we recognize them from myths or history if we saw some of them? Some of the original Eternals were Icarus, who shares connections to Noah with his Ark from the Bible, and the Greek hero Theseus. Although I don't know if he actually shares any connections to the character from Greek myth. Icarus, which is kind of weird. Circe, who shares a connection to the mythical sorceress Circe, though the spelling of their names is different. Zeras, often paralleled with the Greek god Zeus. His daughter Thena, often paralleled with the daughter of Zeus and goddess Athena. Kingo, originally a samurai turned famous action film star. Makari, originally the son of the Eternals, Varen and Mera, often paralleled with the Greek deity Hermes. Phaestos, who many once thought of as Hephaestus, the blacksmith and weapons forger from from Greek mythology, Ajax, son of the Eternals Ama and Eryx, mistaken for the Greek warrior and hero Ajax, Ajax's sibling, Sprite, often mistook as Shakespeare's puck and literary character Peter Pan, Gilgamesh, who historically was, well, the great leader Gilgamesh, and is often mistook for mythological heroes Samson and Hercules, and the more villainous Eternal Druig, cousin of Icarus, once a famed KGB agent. And that's just to name a few of the Eternals, that's not even all of them, obviously. You also might have noticed that some of their stories, origins, and genders have been changed in regards to their MCU versions, so watch out for that, should be, should be exciting. Number three, their purpose. So why did the Celestials create the Eternals, you might be wondering. Was it just a mad science experiment or a bit of fun for all the powerful cosmic beings? Initially, the Eternals are led to believe that they were actually created to be Earth's heroes and protectors, which is another reason that the Deviants and Eternals come into conflict. The Deviants believe that they were meant to inherit the Earth according to one of their Celestial creators. However, this promise was later broken and discarded by other Celestials, and so they wage a constant war against their rival subspecies, the Eternals. In fact, while Eternals are thought of as being mythical heroes and gods throughout history, Deviants have oftentimes also been a part of this mythos, appearing there as the monsters fought against and often defeated or imprisoned in legends. Number two, their real purpose, gasp. In 2018, the true purpose of the Eternals was revealed during Jason Aaron's run on the Avengers. In issue number four, we find out what happened to them and how they killed one another or took their own lives, all because they learned this dark truth. The Celestials had made them protect Earth, but only so they could cultivate it. It turns out that Earth and the Eternals were kind of seen as a potential weapon to be used by the Celestials against the Horde, which are a race of insect-like aliens who are kind of like an opposing force to the Celestials in in the cosmos that provide balance. Where the Celestials are seen as being a force of creation, the Horde are a force of destruction. This revelation drove the Eternals mad after believing they were meant to protect the Earth for millennia. In a fit of turmoil, rage, and sheer agony, they destroyed one another and themselves. I guess Eternals are only immortal if they want to be. Number one, Eternals Volume 5, 2021. JK Lowell's They Are Just Immortal. Recently, the Eternals have returned to the Marvel Universe, coming back to life in the newest Eternal series from 2021. If you want to learn more about why and how they returned, though I mean, remember, they, they are immortal, I highly recommend checking out this newest series. It's also just visually stunning as well. The newest series is written by Kieran Gillen, with art by Asad Ribish, and vibrant and compelling colors by Matthew Wilson. Ugh. I love Wilson's colors. There are also only four issues out right now, so it is a really great time to jump in, catch up, and learn more about the Eternals and their ever ongoing fight against the Deviants. One special and particular kind of Deviant also makes an appearance as their enemy. Trust me, you gotta check it out. 
Which Eternal are you most excited to see jump off of the pages and come alive in the MCU? Who is your favorite Eternal? Are you new to this team or are you a longtime fan of this mythologically steeped, cosmically charged group? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I am your host Amanda McKnight. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, you stay nerdy YouTube.